We're interrupting this program in order to begin our regularly scheduled broadcast. Thanks for watching the Lit TV Network. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. I am your host, Kim Warner. Welcome to Kim's Universe. We have a guest in the house today, uh, Twyla Prendo, CEO of Cash Kids. Twyla, come on in. You and Ashley. Ashley's here again with us, and Ricky's joining us today as well, our producer. I'm so fortunate to have these wonderful people as a support system. Let's talk about that support. Let's hang that cliff right there because we're going into the root chakra. You got to have support. All right. Twyla. Well, well, thank you so much for having me today. I am Twyla Prindle. I am the founder of Cash Kids, where we teach K-12 students how to master money skills early, so they can lead struggle-free lives. So bottom line is I am teaching financial literacy to the young people. All right. So you can find her. We'll give that information at the end, but um, she's on Instagram and uh, um, Facebook. All right, Ashley, Business Grace. I'm Ms. Ashley back again with the pleasure of Miss Kim inviting me still. And um, as always, my business services are business coaching, coaching and consulting, excuse me. Um, here to help you as you're an entrepreneur setting your foundations and diagnosing any issues you may have within your business. Amen. All right. Our producer, we got to bring him in. He's an awesome guy. <laughs> I mean, creative and all of that. Rick. Hello, I'm Ricky. I am Ricky Bernard Smith. First of all, thank you for having me on. I am Ricky Bernard Smith of Ricky Bernard Smith Media. I am here to put your business in the streets. Woo! Ooh, like Tell that. them what I said on that post on Facebook. I said, get that gossip out there. <laughs> That's the kind of gossip we like. Okay. <laughs> All right. So um, as we go forward, we're still pulling information out from Genesis 37, which has to do with the covenant. Um, also connected to Noah. The, co the covenant is all through the Bible. It's the number one um, um gift that God wants to give us. It's the promise. And it is a gift. So um, our agreement and relationships with God first and moving on. But we began to discuss individuals that actually experienced um, understandings of the covenant through conversations with God, conversations that other people hadn't had or heard, such as with Noah and with Joseph. And the ridiculing and the mocking. So here we're going into Genesis 37 and 9. And we're going to take us into another aspect of personal development uh, that helps us emotionally. So here in Genesis 37 and 9, um, it, it says, and he dreamed yet another dream uh, and told to his brethren and said, behold, I have dreamed a, a dream more and behold, the sun and the moon and the 11 stars made aviance to me. And what that saying is, is that he had a dream. And that is what Sears uh, experience um, prophets as well. Um, I believe that anyone that is breathing, they have dreams that can lead them into positive uh, outcomes in their life. So later on, why we're not experienced pos experiencing positive. Because you see, in Joseph's life, what happened is he had to go through a gamut of experiences. And his reliance, as we've said before, was on God. Uh, and his dreams, uh, that was part of his personality, as, as, as a matter of fact. So here, um, this was a sign of Joseph coming into mastery over himself and world challenges. But it would take time because when you first come into life, you are learning about things. And one of the key uh, words that I spoke was mastery. In most cases, people don't understand that they need to master triggers or master hurt, master pain, master re relationships, master the business, um, 
master their home, master their life. And that means that I shall have no other master before me, no other God. So there's a God situation going on in a lot of our lives that we have to make a choice with. And um, that is some deep conversation, but it's the truth because I've chosen at some point to have a God over me that tells me how to function in my life. Well, here is God telling him what he will become and what will happen in the future. This is wisdom. So let's look at these words, sun, moon, and I put ascended because Jesus ascended after he was crucified. And these are words that people don't wanna look at when you start breaking them down. But whenever you begin to ascend, that means that there's a change in who you've been, your personality. Your personality, it also means that your emotions, which is connected to the moon here, he said, I've given it to him. He gave him the ability to understand how to master his emotions by taking him into wisdom concerning the moon and the sun. Anybody want to give any um uh, add anything before I go on. Okay. I would like to ask you, um, as we as we're talking about mastering, um, I guess the different the different problems that we have. If I was to ask you a question, I would ask you, how do you master? How would you go about mastering? Um, if you had anger or um, jealousy, any 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 emotion or something, how how would you go about mastering that emotion? So you you're going to find out where first of all you're going to get help that can di direct you in why you're angry. So you know when we work with let's say anger management, it's managed through a process, and that means that you're taking the person even into that color of the root chakra that says, excuse me, says that um, I, I want to know why I keep getting angry. So that's an inner um, affliction. It's also part of rebuilding that kingdom within you. Um, let me go into this part and it, it's going to help because uh, Twyla working with cash kids, um, we have discussed so many times or over the decades how our communities, they lack understanding on security. Most people get upset because they're not secure in what they believe about their self and someone has to tell them. So there's fear. And so Twyla, when we discuss um, the financial aspect, what have you found about children? If you could disclose anything that you decided to begin to build them up in finances because that's security. That's teaching security. No longer am I in fear of instability. What could you give to the conversation that helps the children and even adults move away from anger because of finances? Well, the thing is, oh, man, that's a loaded question. But the thing is, you have to be aware of the emotion first of all like you may be angry and don't even realize that you are angry and then once you have that emotion you have to you know get get around or become a part of something to help you so if i go back to the kids what we typically do is as we're going through our programs and our workshops then these things start to come out the we all have beliefs about money and those beliefs are really formed by the time we're at age seven. So all those feelings that you have around money or the feelings that your parents have put on you um, about money, they come out. And so what we do is we just address those. So for an example, mm -hmm. we're talking about um, income or talking about um, expenses. The kids, of course, you know, they always tell the parents business. But um, they're talking about um, what bills they have and they're going on what they hear and how their parents feel and what they think. And so once we see that like, okay, well, my mom is upset because she doesn't have enough money to pay X, Y, Z. And I feel like, you know, I wish I could help her. Then we have to start addressing that emotion and talking to that kid about, you know, okay, that's not your problem, so to speak. But, you know, how do you 
how do you become better? How do you help your mom with knowledge? How do you help yourself so you don't grow up into that same cycle? And we're teaching them about cycles and how, because like a lot of times we all go through, when we talk about anger, we go through the same thing over and over again. And as we're going through those same things, we're not even aware that it's a cycle. And so one of the things I will say, um, talking to Miss Kim, is being able to point those things out and being able to point that you go through the same cycles, like almost the same time every year or every few years, and being aware of that. And so once you make that aware to a child, then they're, they know, and then you just keep reinforcing it with lessons so mm -hmm. that seed is planted. Now, mm -hmm. they may not get it or fully understand it now, but they'll understand it later, just like myself. My parents taught me about money. I didn't really fully get the full understanding of it, but as I got older, I was like, oh, that's what they meant by this. Oh, that's what they meant by this. So that's how it works. So, so the, I'm sorry, <laughs> no worries. It was very clear and plain. Ashley, you want to add before, or Ricky, do you want to come back? I, I like that whole awareness. Um, mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I think that's where as it relates, I know you were talking about kids, but as it relates to adults, I think a lot of times we, we continue to go through that cycle because we're not aware of it. Yes. So my question to you, Miss Twyla, is how do you, is it possible to get someone to see that, to, to get someone to be aware of the cycle that they're going through, or do they just have to come into that knowledge? I think it is. I think both of what, both of, both of those are good answers and yes to both, but I think it depends because I'll just, I'm just going to use myself. So, well, it's for all of us we receive information differently from different people. I can say something to you. I can say, hey, you know what? You talk too loud every Friday. <laughs> and you may be like, all right, Twyla, whatever. But then Miss Kim can come behind me and say, hey, you know what? You talk too loud on Fridays. And you'd be like, oh, I do? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's possible, but it may have to come from somewhere else. Or as you are, if you are a person that's ever growing and you're into self-development you are going to become aware if you truly want to grow because mm -hmm. as you're reading as you're doing the work or what have you all those things are going to come to you is it going to all come out at one time no but the more you know the more you grow and then you make those changes as you go all right Ashley? i wanted to follow up on that because that situation literally just happened to me um, the other day I got upset and I reacted immediately, right? Because that's what we do when we get upset, when we get angry. Um, but then I paused and I said, am I really angry? Because sometimes angry is just a natural reaction. Mm -hmm. Yes. When somebody hurts you, when somebody disrespects you, when, when you feel called out, what have you, you get angry, but sometimes it's really not anger. So when I paused and I thought about it, I said, I'm not angry, I'm hurt. And I feel invalidated. And then personally, I then scheduled a, a session with Ms. Kim to discuss it and figure it out because she's the person that I go to for guidance to work out my issues. As she mentioned, having someone help you. But then what I, the connection that I made with her was that I've been in this place before, but I was able to recognize it. I said, this feels very familiar. And then it's a matter of, am I gonna do what I did before or am I gonna do something different? And that's when you step into mastery. When you recognize this is very familiar. And the last time that I went through this, I did this and now I'm back here. And what did I get when I made that decision the first time? Was that the best decision for me or was it still the best decision for someone else? When I make this decision for me, how do I see it manifesting? And also, how do I see myself have changed? Now, if you make the same decision and it really wasn't the best decision, it's going to come back up and you're going to have to go, oh, well, clearly I'm making a mistake and you have to do it differently. So for me, because I recognized it early enough on, I said, oh, I don't want to go through this again, but I'm not sure 
where I might have made the wrong decision. So then I, I, I was seeking guidance and I got my guidance and I got straight. But that's how you step into your mastery when you something. It's just the littlest thing will go. Wait a second. I saw this before. I don't want to do what I did before. I want to do better. Mm -hmm. So um, I want to add that in order to get to awareness, you you begin a practice is different than the practices that you've been in. That means that if you are angry, you're going to begin to either pray about your anger or you're going to begin to meditate because there's no change in any of us without internal change because the kingdom of God is within. So the, the format is number one, to be able to uh, slow down my thinking and my ideas that keep me looking for an answer outside of me. I go within and I begin to focus on that feeling because feeling is what's trying to tell me that this is not healthy in a sense. Now, anger can be healthy because it's a motivator, but if we don't harness it, then what happens is, is that it controls us rather than we controlling it. So in all of these experiences that we see, even when we read spiritual things and biblical things, these people had issues. The thing that, that happened for them is that they transformed the issues. They're humans. Mm -hmm. Therefore, every human has challenges with anger or, uh, yeah, anger in some way. They may not be speaking up enough. They may not be... Uh, talking about what's bothering them so that a uh, volcano of issues uh, comes in and that passive aggressive type of energy, it explodes. Then you have some people, again, you know, I've taught these in my classes that they speak all the time, but they're talking because it's nervous energy, which even adds up to uh, anger because it's anxiety. You know, some people would say, oh, I don't, I don't agree with it. It's okay if you don't agree with it. The thing is, is that if you don't know your moon sign, I'm going there. You <laughs> will never manage your emotions because the moon is the trigger to your emotions. Do you understand? Viewers, do you understand? So all of these undercurrent ideas of information that's been taken away from us, that's why we study what we study. Red is the color for the root chakra, which is the at the base of the spine. Y'all can go and look it up. I raised up my t-shirt and I'm talking about the viewers. I raised up my t-shirt, follow us, because next week it will be another color. But I raised up the t-shirt last week so you could get a glimpse. You can purchase those. The key is finding out if I'm stuck there. Most people that are stuck with a root chakra uh, issue is like financially... Uh, deficit and that's why I brought Twyla in. Listen, y'all know I like to keep it real. It's not putting her in a place where she's uncomfortable, but uncomfort or discomfort is where we learn and we grow. So mm -hmm. she works with economics for children. This is a generation, our covenant, it implores us to feed generations to grow. Economic, social, and biological issues are at the root of our people. And so if we don't go back to the root, dismantle that, and, and you know, people will say, how teaching? You can never become wise without teaching. You can't. You must study. You know, if you don't study, your life will not be what you desire it to be because you have no focus to change your mind. The focus must be to put something in your mind, seeding. It's the same concept of, you know, let they that have ears, let them hear what the church is saying. We're all churches. We're saying, how do we get better? We get better, number one, by teaching wisdom. And that's where here, the three wise men come in. And, and you know, what's, what's up with all of this here? Uh, witchcraft in the Bible or witchcraft in people, when they talk about the sun, the moon, and the stars, you was born on a day of success. Take the success on and learn about your day. Learn about your day. 
if the Magi followed a star. And I teach this all the time in my classes because I'm going to go up. That's a time of eternity that we weren't in. But baby, guess what? Harriet Tubman followed a star to the north. Mm -hmm. Navigation. These are things that people, they didn't tell us, but listen, we're here to tell. So I brought her on and we got business grace. Number one, studying with these young women. Why? So that they can be successful. We ain't got nothing slipping through the cracks no more because here is support right here, right? You need support in the root because there's been minimal support for us. So we're teaching support, support groups for who? For us. And stop undercutting your people. These here, you go to church and it's tribal. What kind of tribe you got that's not benefiting you? My benefits are in all of them and more. Oh, it's more that's coming. I'm loyal to them, so they have to give me loyalty back. That's a righteous indignation. I get angry when people expect something from people and they're not giving anything. And money is not the only thing. So here, the mad guy is following. You read Matthew 2 for yourself. Everyone, viewers and all. The mad guy is following the star to Jesus. You can't overlook things that people don't want to talk about. Mm. Following a star to him. Why? Because Jesus is a star, but Jesus is a human being. That name is human. The Christ is his spiritual name. Listen, in church, I used to say Jesus, Jesus Christ. I thought it was his last, last name. name. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to let y'all come on in because we're going to bring this back up. The Magi, the star, even going into your birthday. When you started talking about um, that we need to uh, be taught, uh, I think we have to come to a place as, as, as a man. I had to come to my come to a place to bring myself to learn to shut up and to learn that there's someone that has more knowledge than me. And if they criticize me, shut up, take it, look out. Well, first of all, you have to look at where the criticism is coming from. Right. And then when you see that it's like some a professional or someone that's trying to help you out, then then you have to I had to hum, learn how to humble myself. Humble myself. So as, as we talk about being taught that that's some form of awareness as well, that you, you have to realize that you don't know everything. Amen. And I have to learn again our, our favorite word, shut up, mm -hmm. listen, and, and be taught. And mm -hmm. um and I've been on it this this whole um, self accountability uh, trip for for several years now, and 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 as uh, Miss Twyla talked about awareness, one of the things that I had to make sure is that I'm not using um, lack of self awareness as a excuse to act a certain kind of way, and and. We'll, then I realized that, and if I'm just being real, there's certain behaviors that I do that I'm fully aware that I do and that I know that it's wrong and I like doing them. But for my, <laughs> for like, like for me, I like to be extremely short and sarcastic. Now I know that that can be wrong in, in some situations. Some people deserve it, but no, never mind. We'll, we'll, I'm, I'll take that part out. But I know that it's wrong, but I'll do it anyway. But what that does, if, 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 if I don't, Put, uh, nip that in a bud that can hinder a uh, growth in my relationships with with my with my spouse with my friends with my mentors it can hinder a relationship on my job so part of um that's all part of teaching part of me yeah. seeing me realizing that i need to you know ricky shut up sit down listen here here are your flaws that you you need to work on because no matter the one thing i don't the pastor can't lay hands on them out out of you you can't pray and they leave you. You really have to work on your flaws. So as you started talking about teaching, being taught, and then Ms. Travis started talking about being awareness, all of that just, just kind of meshed together for me because it's something that I've had to deal with, something I had to look in the mirror at, you know, that, Ricky, you need to be taught. <laughs> You're already aware of your behavior. Yes. So let's make some changes. Yeah. I um, think um, 
a large part of that also is like when you say your mentors and 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 it's about receiving information like Twyla mentioned. Like she gave the example, if you say, oh, you talk loud every Friday, oh, whatever, because you might not identify with her as someone who could teach you something. Mm -hmm. But then if somebody else comes to you and gives you the same criticism, you're like, well, maybe they're right. Mm -hmm. But a part of that awareness is also, like you said, if you know you talk loud, you know you're talking loud on Friday because <laughs> you're doing it on Monday through Thursday too. Mm -hmm. it, it, so it, somebody's it, just bringing it to your attention and it's about being open to receive information because that's where the teaching comes in. Mm -hmm. um, another person that we've worked with in our group that Ms. Kim has, she says something to me that was very profound. You only meet yourself and other people. Okay. And when I heard that, the first time I said, well, what does that mean? But then what I realized is I'm only, when I don't like something about somebody, like we spoke about when my say was going, it's really yes. because it reflects back into me. It's maybe an insecurity I have or what have you, or I'm jealous or whatever. But even then, that then emits an emotion, which reverts back to that root chakra because that's my security. My security within myself, mm -hmm. my security within my position, what have you. So all of that plays into now. Personally, I love self-development and I love figuring myself out more. And then also how it helps me figure out other people and our interactions so it's it's part of like my inquisitive mind. I always need to know why, how, and pick something apart because I always think everything is a puzzle. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's the constant learning and growing and going, having that moment of, aha, that's where that comes from. Got it. N now let me address it. Ashley, um, that whole everything that you just said, I'm I'm going to go ahead and we're going to delete that out because. I, my wife told me, she said, the reason why you don't like so-and-so is because they act just like you. And I <laughs> denied it, and I denied it, and I'm listening to you, and I and I hate hearing things twice or three times. I hate because it's like, okay, maybe there's some, <laughs> there's some form of truth to that. So I'm just going to act like I didn't hear what you said, and I'm just going to keep, you know, stay on, stay on my road of not liking this person. But you are absolutely right. You, you, mm -hmm. you are right. And, and she... And sometimes somebody that you know can tell you something, but you just be like, nah, nah, that ain't the truth. And but yeah. and the funny thing is that somebody that you don't know can tell you the same thing and you'll believe them more than you believe the person that that um that you do that you do know, if that makes any sense. It does. And I was gonna say too that before she, she said that, that nine times out of ten, whatever your thing is, like the talking loud. Somebody has told you that before. That's not yes. the person, especially at our age. You know, so we've mm -hmm. heard it many times. You know you talk loud, and you're just hearing it over and over again. So at what point do you accept, like, you know what? Everybody keeps telling me the same thing. I need to change. So the part of acceptance is the key um, mm -hmm. and accountability. You know, that's where all this ties in. And I know we're running out of time, so we'll be back. And so we'll see you next week. I thank God for all of you. We'll get back into this. And um, even Ricky's Rebellion, we're going to take care of that, everyone. Wait a minute I'm now.